While there's no crystal ball to predict market moves, senior analyst John Markman comes pretty close to making spot on calls. He October reminded me of the one he made during our last best. interview. A couple of months ago when I said that October 13th was typically the best day of all. Yes. Of all, of all the days, all the 365 days of the year, October 13th tends to be the best single day to invest. I want to show folks a clip of that interview. Here's my advice. If the market goes down into October 13th, close your eyes and buy. Most people don't like to buy into lows. It's hard because stocks are going down, bonds are going down, commodity prices are going down. It's going to be really hard to buy, but as a short-term opportunity, try it, see if it works. And since the day of our last interview? Did you look at what happened on October 13th? That's been exactly the low of the whole fall. The market's up 12% since then, so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> that was a spot-on prediction. It happens from time to time. John's track record is reflected in the Power Elite and Weiss Technology portfolio. Members are sitting on triple-digit open gains on a number of positions. Right now, there are some big names John sees going up next year, like Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Google is an incredibly successful, well-run company. One of the reasons that stocks have done poorly this year is that interest rates have been rising. But you know, if the Fed decides that it's gone too far and it's done its job of crushing inflation, then, you know, rates will come down and falling rates are tremendous for growth stocks like technology. You look overall at growth stocks or technology stocks in general, they were shunned this year in favor of value stocks. But the page always turns. For some reason, it turns on, on, on a dime on the beginning of the new year. And I think we'll have a reversion back to technology and back to growth. And if that's the case, stocks like Google are going to look incredibly cheap. You know, Google's only trading at around 17 times earnings and have gross margins at north of 80%. It's an incredible bargain, to tell you the truth. Alphabet's recent layoffs aren't necessarily a sign of doom and gloom for the company. Google has a new internal program called Pitchfork, which uses machine learning software to train code to write code, then fix and update that code automatically. The need for human software writers could be dramatically reduced. What they're trying to do is put themselves out of business, which is exactly what a technology company should do. They should, they should be their own disruptor. Unfortunately, if it works, and I think it will work, you see a lot more electrical engineers and computer engineers looking for work. During really stressful periods, you see people who are fired, their backs against the wall. They get very creative and they figure out new things to do and they create new companies and new products. I know you're a big fan of Apple. Do you see that rising next year? You know, Apple had a pretty tough year because there's a lot of expectations that a recession would prevent people from buying iPhones. And also there is this horrible deal in China where the government locked up its people and workers to avoid COVID. But, you know, that lockup is over and inventories have been slimmed down. And, you know, Apple is the premier maker of the handheld technology in the world today. And so I'm looking for this company, which fell 26% this year, uh, to have a pretty good rebound in 2023. John sees Apple as a bargain. Back in January, it was the first U.S. company to reach a market cap of $3 trillion. It happened briefly during trading. You could see a good 20, 25% gain in, in Apple this time next year. Another stock to put on your radar, Netflix. John says for long-term investors, this period of weakness is a buying opportunity. It's way oversold and deserves a, at least a 25 to 35% um, rebound over the next six to nine months. Netflix recently announced it's starting its first cheaper ad-supported plan. John says digital advertisement should ignite growth. Netflix is a company that's not going to be taken over by a large company. It's not going to be bought by Disney. It's not going to be bought by Microsoft. They have done a fantastic job over the years of carving their own path. And the path that they chose was to create all of their own content because that's the cheapest way of acquiring it and then you own it forever. And they've done a tremendous job with creating new content over the last year. They're going to do the same point to what I hear next year. Stock's gotten really cheap because of the expectation that their new revenue model was that advertising was going to go poorly. But I think it's going to be a huge benefit both for its customers on an artistic level and as well as to investors on a financial level. Those benefits may be part of an overall shift in stock trends. Next year, we're going to swing back to the big cap growth stocks. They got cheap during this period of unease. Bottom line, consider buying your favorite big tech stocks now to gear up for third quarter gains in 2023. Senior analyst John Markman, it is always a pleasure to get your insights. Thank you so much for making time for me today. Always great to talk to you, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs> 